guys, nice to see you. As you can see, I got a promotion. I'm in the studio. Nice to see you, Benny, Alma, Michael, Victor, Leo. Those of you guys that are joining us, don't be shy. Turn on your cameras. We're not gonna call on you unless you raise your hands. Do you have any brave volunteers that wanna share the big wins that they had since last the last week we had? So this last weekend I did two events and did really well. What kind of events did you do? Like uh, paranormal events, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, where'd you do the event at? Here in South Carolina at a and b that's local to here. So it was a successful event for yourself? Yeah. Do you normally T-shirts do... and some jewelry. Hmm? Oh, okay. What kind of jewelry did you do? A lot of Native American type designs. And okay. the shirts were all paranormal and some Native American. Had some good... We had a really good time. Oh, that's good to hear. Any other brave volunteers? Michael? Nothing this week. Just... Same old, same old. Nothing. Had a couple orders done. Okay. Just the mere fact that you're joining us, that's a big accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay, Alma? You had Rudy up first. Okay, Rudy. The famous Rudy. Hey I hope guys, I hope you have one. some good stuff for me. Actually, I do. Uh, well, I don't know if you really want to call it a win or not, but last we spoke, I'm a, you, know, mommy, you know me, I'm a big advocate of taking care of your machines, right? Uh -huh. And as you know... So I could let everybody know my machine went down my DTF printer, one of the print heads. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Right. And the moral of the story is, is that I told my, my son, my 17 year old boy was working with me on on the actual machine. And he actually got a little nervous. I go, don't worry about it. It's a fix that we've taken care of. We're learning the machine. And the moral of the story is. Him and I were actually working together on our DTF machine. We took it apart. We we opened her up and, you know, it was one of those moments where it's a father and son moment, like working under the hood of their vehicle, right? So we took the print heads apart. I was full of ink. He was full of ink. Mm -hmm. But it was it was fun because even though we stirred hours, but we were able to to find a solution to that little problem that we had, right? I was telling my son, so what did you get out of it? And he says, dad, you know what? I got out of it that I'm not a, supposed to be afraid of the machine. I'm supposed to actually take care of her and feed her right and clean, make sure our machines is clean and up and running, right? Do you understood why it's important for us to do maintenance in our machines and to know your machine personally? Because what if tech support is not available? You're printing late at night and the machine goes down. Oh my God, what am I going to do? I can't call customer service because you guys are asleep. But either way, you know, unless you have my number like me, exactly. But you know what? Let me tell you, you and Marvin were there all constantly. And if I text you late at night, you answer me. I think you were at a family gathering and you, you responded back to me. The moral of the story is I love Omni and their customer service. And I felt so comfortable that if I needed a part, I know I could just call somebody and say, hey, I need this like now. Right. Or I could always fulfill it through you guys. I taught my son a valuable lesson as being a business owner, because I'm doing it for them. They're going to take it to a better level. Omni's customer service is phenomenal. You and Marvin, Edgar are amazing, and it's a great team. I feel that it, you guys are part of my life naturally, and and I don't, I don't see you guys as just my vendors. I see you guys as a family, and you guys were always making sure that I was okay, and you guys took care of me. Thank you once again. When I was asking questions about the software, you took your time and broke it down to me so I could understand. I do appreciate that. So that's my ultimate win. It's a big win. It was a good moment for my son because, you know, he's 17 years old and I'm teaching him to be an entrepreneur, right? And because I always tell my kid, you have to be your own boss. You got to learn your machines. And I tell this to everyone, you know, anybody that owns a business, if you buy some type of printing equipment, Learn your machine, learn it to the T and you're the one that has to be the solution to that. And, and one thing for sure, have a maintenance fund. <laughs> That's definitely for sure. Let me ask you this, since I know Michael has the same printer, what ended up being the problem? My head was clogged up. Were you able to kind of flush it out and experiment with that? Yeah, that's right. I took it out completely out of the cradle. I got a syringe and I'm thinking, oh man, I don't have an, I don't have a tip to this. So I, I got a tube. I, I cut it and connected it to my little syringe 
and was able to insert it in my, you know, my print head, the little channel areas. Yeah. And I was able to flush. And I was telling my son, if we cannot get solution in here, that means we, the heads are really clogged up or they're like totally destroyed, right? But luckily, all four channels were able to be flushed out. And I told my son, let's also do the dampers. So we flushed out the dampers. It seems that it prints like it was brand new. Ink flows. That's really good. For everybody that's listening that has a DTF, what he did is more an advanced orange belt going towards black belt training with your printer. Definitely flushing a printer, it exposes you potentially damaging it, but I'm glad you were able to fix it. You have to be really gentle when you're flushing it to make sure you don't burst the printhead, but I'm glad you were able to get that working, Rudy. Thank you for the testimonial. No, yeah, I don't want to sound repetitive or insult anybody, but it's vital that as a business owner, you have to learn your machines. You have to, because what if worst case scenario happens, right? You're the only one there to fix it and have extra parts just in case for a, a rough moment. I was in the military. I did my 21 years in the service and I'm always thinking worst case scenario and I always have a backup to the backup. Luckily, I have a network of friends that have DTF printers. So in case something happened, I could go to one of them or I could always call Edgar or Marvin. Networking with the other DTF partners or any other printers that are out there, it's very key. Very key. To the point where, oh, I forgot to mention this also, that I'm growing out of my current DTF that I'm actually going to be buying a second one. That's a big win. And I like just to touch up on what you're saying, Rudy, how crucial it is to be prepared when you're running a business, a print shop, you know, that's kind of the main thing we talk, we like to talk about here is, you know, running a business. And I remember when we, we were running full throttle on the direct to garment at my shop, we had between 12 to 15 different direct to garment printers and enough parts to build, build a couple of direct to garment printers that we needed to, cause we're always, you know, swapping up parts, you know, you're constantly using them. So it's crucial to know your equipment. Once you get to that point where you're using it a lot, to be able to feel, have that confidence to, you know, get your hands dirty and, you know, replace parts. Tech support is here to help, but once you get a bit more advanced, you're a race car driver, you bought a car, right? We're, we're obviously here to help as much as we can, but when it comes to being a race car driver, you have to really learn what you're doing, right? True. So it's crucial that as a business owner, we have to have that maintenance fund. We can be at least have buy the parts, even though you may not use them for a long time, but at least you have it in your stock. Even like I said, I'm a small print shop. I work out of my home, but still, if you don't have a second printer, you got to have those second parts at least, you know, and, and what I do, what helps me out every time I make a sale and I put it into a, a maintenance fund, even when I do my state taxes, I do the same concept. I get that little percentage and I move it over to my sales tax account but it's crucial as business owners we got to have those extra supplies whether you're small or whether you're big thank you rudy and that's that's really good what you just mentioned right now managing your revenue managing you know allocating funds to different things you know i you know that's good that you have a an account where you have your maintenance for anything that happens you know you you know that you're already pre-planned for those repairs and just, you know, repairs are, you know, it's the name of the game. You know, you're purchasing equipment, you're running a business, you're running a print shop. I remember when we had our automatic screen printing press, I was running full throttle, but sometimes something would happen. Our guys, for the most part, knew how to fix it, but we also had our repairs on hand. Thanks for pointing that out, Rudy, because one of the biggest things is managing your funds. I remember I've talked to different individuals where when you're pricing out what you're doing, you want to make sure that you do have the budget for like a shirt order for like 20 bucks. You know that, okay, $2 I'm going to move towards future marketing. You know, $1 is going to go to the overhead, you know, a couple dollars for admin, a couple dollars for what I'm going to pay. So like just being able to manage, you know, the, the revenue that's coming in is crucial. I know Alma, you had your hand up. You've been super patient. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I had a win and I got to hang out with Edgar this morning. And we talked about scaling my business and working on my website so that I could streamline my orders. He gave me a lot of good pointers and I'm going to be doing my homework that I was put to do. I did send out that invoice or the quote. Nice. Um, oh, hey, it's the name of the game. How'd you feel? Can you share about that experience and the, the 
the story in regards to that order and what you had to do? I normally get my orders through Instagram or from word of mouth. People will send me a message. That one I got last night around 8.30, almost 9 o'clock at night. I let her know um, that I would give her the quote back today. She was asking for uh, three polos, colors I don't have in stock. I would have to order those. And then 12 windbreakers. I've done windbreakers before, but they're delicate to do. You have to have some um, kind of decorating technique that's low, low heat. So it, it does take a little bit longer. That's what I was talking to Edgar about. The fact that some of the orders that I receive are specialty items. I needed a, to give her a quote because I always just get the, the question like, oh, I'm in charge of a softball team or I'm in charge of a, of a, a vote for whatever reason. And I want to get the logo. This is the name of the team. I don't have a logo. I would need you to create one for me. We want three coaches, polos, and 12 windbreakers. So the first thing that I did different that I normally do is normally I'm like, okay, well, let me show you what I have and all this other stuff. But I'm so tired of always doing so much in the beginning without getting the conf confirmation. So what I asked her is, well, do you need a quote? She said, yes. Yeah. So I, I told her I would send her the quote today. I was waiting for Edgar in the morning <laughs> so that I could ask him that question. And we kind of went over the pricing. And so my pricing is pretty good. What you end up quoting at it for the three polos and the 12 windbreak? For the three printed polos, it's $50 a polo. And for each one of the windbreakers, I quoted 75 for each windbreaker. And th these are printed. If she wanted embroidered, the polos would go to 60 based on the embroidery of less than a dozen items. I'm the kind of person that usually takes like one or two orders. Edgar and I are talking about doing something different and scaling it up. I sent out the invoices after I hung up with, well, after I got off the call with you. And then I, I gave her an hour and then I called her. She didn't answer. So I left her a voicemail, letting her know the different pricing and the invoices that I sent, call me back. And after I called her like 10 minutes later, she texts me, oh, one of the other coaches got a quote from somebody else. And so I was expecting to be turned down because of the softball teams in this area, they want slow ball you when it comes to pricing. And so sometimes I do get nervous that I'm overpricing. But when I talked to Edgar, it made me feel more confident that my pricing is pretty much on point in this area. So I was okay with the rejection of it more so than... How did you feel getting that no based on the conversation that we had? I felt better because then that means that I'm not doing so much work for pennies. <laughs> I was okay with it. I'm like, I'm not, I, I mean, I, I kind of felt it inside that I was doing so much for such a little bit amount of money mm -hmm. based on the orders of, of stuff that I get. But talking with you, I was like, okay, no, I'm, I'm right. Like that's that I'm pricing it correctly. I'm doing it correctly. And if they don't want to pay that amount, that's fine. Like if they're mm -hmm. going to go to somebody else and they're going to drop their price for whatever many dollars less, I know I do quality work. So speaking with you, I felt like that's what my time is worth talking about setting up the website where it tells me like, tells them like what their prices are going to be. It doesn't make me feel like I'm going to lose a sale. Mm -hmm. It's That's my price. If you want to pay that price, that's fine. If you don't, then you can go through somebody else and then they can do the more work for for the less money. And then one of the things we talked about is understanding your buyer persona. In other words, like what customer are the one that you're targeting, right? And then you're like the pricing that we talked about was good because the assumption is they don't have any art. How long would you say it would have taken you art wise to do something like that, Alma? Well, usually for me, since I'm such a veteran when it comes to artwork, it, it'll take me like 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes an hour, but no mm -hmm. more than two hours to create artwork and send it out. I always ask them what ideas they have. It's hard to design something like, no, you're going to tell me what you want, what you like, what ideas you have. And then from that, I can kind of go through. I did three logos today since you've hung up with me. Well, that's really good, especially when you're dealing with a retail customer. They're not going to, you know, understand the minutiae, the details as far as like the, you know, the decoration. When we were talking about 
how much do you bill as an artist per hour? You need to be 30, ideally $50 an hour. The more advanced ones are between 75 to $100 an hour for art. When you're dealing with customers, they're like, hey, I don't have any artwork. I'm like, okay, it's gonna take me a couple hours to do this for you. You can separate the two, turn something that's a problem into providing it as a solution where you can generate more revenue. Like, oh, you don't have a logo. I'm gonna charge you $100 to come up with a design. I'm gonna give you two different examples. It's gonna be $100 for the art. And, and that's what I was going to talk to you about website. You know how we do, there's like the DTF and like how much that was going to be like when people order. And then there's the embroidery. Is there one where I could put like graphic or what's it called? Um, vector graphic or something like that, where they can pick that and they can send me a picture of something that they like or something that they want. And then I can design it. Or is that something that works doesn't do? And in the, in the next two months at the longest, we're doing an upgrade to our, our software, right? And it's going to allow you to have a library of different graphics on there that, you know, they'll be able to pick from. So as an example, if you have, you know, like sport, you know, people that do sports or athletics, you'll be able to have different graphics on there that they can pick. You can upload those graphics. There's different templates that you can purchase and upload them. They can pick something and let you know more or less what they want, right? There's different ways that I would approach a customer like that. I'd be like, oh, it's gonna be a hundred bucks to come up with your design. I'm gonna give you a couple of different options and then we'll pick the one that's best. Or if you want three options and then maybe a revision, it's gonna be $150. Once we have your design, that's going to be $30, $35 for the polo. It's going to be $50 for the windbreaker. And then the art's going to be a one-time charge. So when you come back, you're not dealing with the art charge. But the main thing is that you having the confidence of what you're selling, right? Chris just put on there valuing yourself and your skills is hard, right? But it's like setting your, setting your process from the get-go. Especially, you know, how some of the things that we're going to be working on was your online website and your presence because we talked about one of the things that I struggled with in the beginning was I had con confrontation avoidance. I, like if there was bad news I needed to deliver to a customer, even when it got to the point where I had four or five different sales, salespeople, front office admin, like, oh man, we're, I have to give a customer bad news. I would let somebody else be the bad news bearer and took started dealing with that kind of stuff. So having a website, making it easier for your customers is going to help out. So definitely thank you for sharing. Super excited to take you to the next level. Excited. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Anyone else? Oh, I see a hand up. Hey, Greek attire. Oh, okay. My, hopefully I don't slaughter this name. Well, you didn't. Thank you. Cause okay. everybody wrong. So it's good. It's a win because like your first guest said, he feels like Omniprint is a family. So I feel the same way about my customers. Customers had my daughter, cause she always called me ma. So she had my daughter and her phone is sister. Paramedics called my daughter because she was having an episode where they where they needed to speak with family. So she wound up passing in the ambulance. And so my daughter was like, it's, it, it's no way I'm going to tell her daughter what just happened. So I said, okay, call her daughter on three-way and I'll tell it to her. That's a phone call you're never going to forget. I'm sitting here now making a flower arrangement for her funeral. Uh, you know, just checking up on her daughter and stuff like that. So that's a win for me because my customers are my family and we treat them as such. So yeah. that's a very important part. And well, thank you for sharing that tough position to be in. I've never been in a situation like that. So it's definitely, you know, a tough position to be in. I could imagine. Thank you for sharing that. Customers are like family. And at the end of the day, what I like to say when you're in the printing world, you're in the repeat business. You're in the relationship business because if you're just turning and burning every customer, you're never going to see them again, then that's not good for business. I remember when I first started off in screen printing, before I brought it in-house, I was outsourcing it when I was just by myself. 
Then I got into it with a manual press. I bought the wrong press. Didn't have micro registration. I didn't have a good exposure system. And I remember I had two customers that I can remember. One of them, they ended up actually doing like a chargeback on me. They got, they paid like 50% and then cash and then did a chargeback and the rest. And this was, I was so rookie that I didn't know that you couldn't screen print over seams. I know Alma, you're a screen printer. You can't really screen print over seams. And they're like, oh, we want our logo to be on the, so I did a horrible job and I never saw that customer again. And then I did a bad job for someone else. I can't be, you know, this is not, this is not the way to go. I got to the point where I just hated screen printing. So I stopped, went back to outsourcing. Then I got to the point where I scaled up, but I'm not going to do it myself. It needs to be an automatic and whoever I bring in needs to have that experience. And that's super important, especially like someone like Victor Rubio, making sure customers are super happy. And, you know, I always like to say you, like when I, when I, you know, was running smoothly, I would turn my one t-shirt order customer, like the same way that I would treat the Coca-Cola customer, the Facebook customer, the same, because you never know what type of customer you're dealing with. Sometimes I would do one t-shirt and I didn't know that it was a big customer just testing me out. And I did a good job, good customer service. Like I was sharing with Alma, you know, how good when you're trying to work with someone is, do they sound happy, good customer service, you know, did they you know, under promise and over deliver. And I remember I would do these small jobs and all of a sudden there'd be pallets of merchandise just showing up in my doorstep and my office, like orders of, you know, customers that they were just happy, happy with the order they received. And that's kind of some, some of the things I was chatting with Alma, you know, as far as, you know, getting these outsourced partners, because I have, you know, I have like a little, I had on the, the agenda for today is, you know, talking about the different roles and hats that you wear as a business owner, part of the training that I have, and I kind of have a little humor behind it. And we won't really go, I, I don't see us kind of going through all that because I like to always have it like an open forum for everybody to, you know, chat and discuss in regards to it. But one of the things me and Alma were talking about is, you know, establishing those vendor relationships, super important. I'm not sure how many of you guys have your outsourced partners for screen printing, embroidery, you know, direct to garment. The easiest way to do it is just reaching out to somebody that does screen printing or embroidery in your area. Hey, do you do wholesale printing? I get orders for 24 pieces. Can I get your pricing? What's your turnaround time? You can test them with a small order. Once you build that confidence, then you can test them with a larger order. And you know, if they're skilled and professional, they're gonna do a good job because they've gone through the same experience where they've done small orders and then they get larger orders. And at the same time, some of you guys are starting off or wanting to build up that client base. Your local businesses that do screen printing, embroidery, de decoration methods in your area, that's the low hanging fruit. That's the best place to get started to network because I remember I would reach out to screen printers and I would outsource. I'm like, oh, you do direct to garment. I've been turning away a lot of business because I can't help them out. And then I would get their business. So that's the best way to start off doing it that way and I see on the chat. Thank you, I try to make an impact with every customer, definitely. Do we have any other, anybody else that wants to add anything that we've been talking about? Any volunteers? If not, I'm kinda gonna get into, you know, one of the things that I wanted to talk about. I did this a while back and realized there's a lot of different roles and responsibilities. I like to call it different hats that you wear as a business owner. Because there was a period of time where I was having an ident identity crisis where I'm like, I don't want to just be the t-shirt guy. I'm more than just the t-shirt guy. And then it got to the point where like business is going good. Now, now that it's going good, I am the t-shirt guy. But I understood the different roles and responsibilities. And some of you guys that I'm working with, you're going to receive the videos in regards to this. And like I said, I try to keep it with a sense of humor. And I kind of put it on here. If you start with the acceptance and training of these roles, you will never be broken. Even if your business in, is in the intensive care unit, you will minimize panic and will learn to harness the power of fear. Once I learned all these roles I was responsible for, I learned to be calm and patient in all situations while those around me were running around like headless chickens. And that's something where you start wearing these, you understand, you learn how to pause, take a deep breath. Feel free if you wanna put stuff in the chat, raise your hands if you have any questions in regards to what I'm talking about. The first role that I have on here is you are the head of the secret service to your mind.
Your mind is the president. Protect what and who gets close to it. If this go down, goes down, it all goes down. Practice best mental health. What I mean by this is that, you know, you're the one that, you know, you have to protect what goes in your ears, right? Listening to positive audio, being around positive people. If you guys surround yourself with negative people, it's going to drown you. Being around positive people, you're literally the head of the secret service to your mind, protecting who you're around. Because if you get around a lot of people that are always constantly dumping neg negativity on you, it's going to be draining. The second one that I have on here is you are back alley doctor and trained terminator repair tech. You will be constantly assessing yourself and repairing yourself from battle wounds. What I mean by this one is that when you're a solopreneur, even when you scale up, you're always going to be dealing with obstacles. You will be constantly assessing yourself and repairing yourself. That's why one of the things that I mentioned is that it's good to have these groups where it's a weekly, almost like our weekly group therapy session where we're here to talk things through like a group. This is the perfect place to offload some of those things that are in your mind. I recommend it in the past. There's this organization called score.org. There's literally retired CEOs, retired business owners. It's a nonprofit. I wouldn't be surprised if their nation towards they're like retired, successful, probably tired of golfing all day long. You know what? I want to mentor new business owners. So definitely reach out to those organizations. I personally have a therapist slash performance coach. I see him on a weekly basis and he's like, just dump everything on me. I'm here to help. You know, the next one that I have on here uh, is this is humorous, right? You're pretty much going to be your own slave. You know, when you're like working a ninja preneur, you're going to be like treating yourself like you're in the trenches, working nonstop. You're going to, you know, treat yourself good and horrible when needed. Some of you guys that are ninja preneurs, you're going to have those long hours. You're going to be grinding it out and that's part of the role. But, you know, there's ways to handle that because some people say that you have to have a balanced lifestyle. Some people say that like I, I personally learned from other entrepreneurs and other people on social media that there's no such thing as having a balanced situation because you're just going to be going from one situation to the next and it's like how you manage your time, you juggle the different situations where during the day you're doing sales, beginning of the day you're doing production, late in the day you're doing production, so you can organize yourself around that. By a raise of hand, does anybody have any comments, anything they want to add? I want to make sure you guys are still with me. Yeah? Vic Victor, I see you. Is there anything you want to add? You're a professional. This time you're comfortable with your hoodie. It's raining in San Diego, so now we're in emergency alert. It's raining and I'm still in my PJs. Today is the lazy day. I'm definitely wearing <laughs> Yeah, it's just, I had a deal that I did last week and, and I put time doing the design. She was finicky and she liked one design and she wanted to see it with this element and that element. And then, and, and it was up to me to not cut it off and I just kept doing a couple ones. So I must have sent her like seven iterations of one design and, and a couple of times I had to rebuild the design because they sent me something in Canva, which doesn't work really well with it. <laughs> so I had to rebuild all the elements, but I didn't charge her anything and I didn't tell her up front. It ended up being a front print design on a polyester shirt with a number on the back and she wanted like 60 shirts. So I told her 20 bucks a shirt, right? And then she came back to me with like, well, do I get a discount? And I'm like, no, she used to be in the printing business in the past. So she said something uh. that, I, that I took a little insulting. She's like, well, the shirt's only $3. And I said, that's absolutely true, but I'm not charging you any art fees. And I must have spent at least 15 hours with you. And she's like, well, uh, uh, you know, she got all upset about it. I knew she was in the industry and I, I felt like she should have known that I've given her a lot of yeah stuff. And so I, I'm like, okay, I'll knock off a dollar each shirt, right? Whatever. And I did cave and do it. Because in the end of the day, she could lead to more business. But you should know what your worth is. You should know the value of the things that you're doing. And she knows she could go somewhere else. And she's not going to pay $20 for a polyester shirt with numbers and, and, a, and a logo on the front. I was doing her the favor. I was also giving her a white glove service, if you want to call it yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. So it, I got irritated. It irritated me the whole day. Like, <laughs> like it just made me grumpy really you went that far but that's the way people are she reduced everything that we did to a three dollar cost and shirt 
And that's just brings me back to reality that that's how they are. And that's how they think. If at the end of the day, had she said that I would have been better if she would have said, no, I don't want it or whatever, because it was too expensive instead of that $3 comment. But I'm, I'm still bringing it up now. I'm having like a relapse on the, on my pain and stress. <laughs> my therapist would tell me Victor, and what did you learn from that? You know, sometimes you just got to cut bait. It's just not worth it. I couldn't be upset about that all the time I gave him because that was my choice, but that comment rubbed the wrong. Remember they're your customer and they don't understand everything. If they ask for a discount, you don't always have to say yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I could have saved 20 and she would have paid it, but I gave her the extra just because she was part of a bigger group. You have to weigh the pros and cons on it. The rain's but, got you, Victor. What's that? <laughs> I said the rain got you. <laughs> Usually you hear that from me. <laughs> but it just is. And, and you're just going to meet people like that and know what it's worth. And that, that's just what, know your worth and charge what you need to charge and let them shop around. And if it's too expensive for them, if I charge them $50 for an item, and they're like, well, that's too much. I would have started off like, well, what's your budget? So you can figure out what price range they're looking at. But all my, they thought that the $50 polo was too expensive. Well, there are $25 and $30 OGO polos, and then there's $8 Sportech polos. So you can always give them a polo. It just depends which kind of polo that they want. I went based on the higher ones because if they're going to, even if I went down to $40, I still have to order them. There's, I have to pay shipping. I don't have a place where I go and pick them up, drive to pick them up. Nobody Thousands. Do you have an account with Sanmar or SNS? So SNS will ship you for free over 200. But it wasn't going to be over 200. Hers. So sometimes I try to save all my orders for the week and mm -hmm. I have staple items. I always have white t-shirts in stock. I always have black t-shirts in stock. I, I have those, but and I have are, tote bags. They're royal blue. <laughs> no, no, but if she places an order and it's going to be about $150 worth of stock, that's a good time to spend $50 to restock your regular stock. Like, it's like what I was talking to Edgar about, not overdoing it. Because I have a lot of stock here. Understood. And when Understood. you start struggling, like you have a lot more business than I do I understand. Right understand and completely. So what I was talking to Edgar about is not just buying more and then not being able to make a profit off of it consistently. The only so, thing that I would tell you then is pass on that shipping fee to them. Add it to the price of the shirt. So if it's 10 shirts and they're $10 a piece, that's a hundred bucks. And they're going to charge you $10 for shipping, charge them 11, start at 11 cost base, and then go from there. That would be my other suggestion. All right. Thank you, Victor. So definitely adding the shipping cost if it's a lower order. But the main thing with Alma was, you know, her not doing a couple hours with the artwork for three polos. It's more like incorporating all the artwork time that she was going to be spending on it. So maybe another... It's kind of like a B testing for marketing. You'll try one thing one day and the, another thing the other day and seeing which one works better. So maybe on another one Alma, you can try separating the art with the actual decorated item. So you can be like, that's going to be a hundred bucks for the art. I'll give you a couple of different options. Once you pick the one that you like, it's going to be what kind of quality polo are you looking for? Medium. It's going to be 35 bucks for a polo. Oh, I want a high quality one. I'm sorry, I went a standard like the ten dollar eight to ten it's like ten for, fifteen for the blank, for the for the blank. yeah and I went on SNS and I looked at the prices it was gonna be a I forgot what brand it was okay. when I do retail I like to ideally double the cost of the garment that's why when you go on like alphabroder.com or, or Sanmar or whatever and before you log in I believe if if unless they changed it they had like the suggested retail price like if you get something for 10 bucks it'll be on there for 20 on their website so then that way when customers go on there it's 20 bucks for this it's 30 bucks for that area right now though um especially with the sports things but in this area right now since it's such a small city every team mom homemaking mom crafting mom has a cricket so i lost last year i had more orders during this time for for softball when i reached out to them to ask them hey are you gonna like order for your softball team or uh are you guys are softball teams i have friends and also people that i met throughout the the years um by doing like pop-ups and going to the those events oh the team mom has a cricket and she made our hoodies there's a lot like we have mm -hmm. our big marketplaces like saturated with it but that's where i 
I am happy to have had the conversation with you, Edgar. I know I'm not just a hobby person. Um, yep. I've seen I've seen those sweaters on the field. These huge uh, numbers or these really, really small fonts. Or, I think we switched to rated R now. We're rated R, so don't they're, worry. They're, you could tell that somebody that doesn't really know what they're doing made it. And that's one of the things we were talking about, Alma, where it's like, we're going to be expanding the mindset. Yeah. You're a West Coast Fulfillment Center, right? Yeah. yeah. Versus, it's kind of where I was talking. To know personal messages like that where I get them and then I give them a price and it's like, oh, we already had somebody else. And it's usually because it's somebody within the team that makes mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So it's kind of like we're going to like we're going to help you do that so you can attract, you know, like. I remember when I was doing it, I was doing nationwide. We still do our fulfillment here. It's nationwide. I was on the West Coast and I started from a marketing background from a different industry. I was already accustomed to being nationwide business. So I'm on the West Coast. So it's like, I'm going to promote myself as, as nationwide. And that's kind of the mentality that you guys, some of you are starting off. Yeah, I have one free jet. I work from home, but with online resources. And that's some of the things we're going to be working on. Alma, like having that online presence where you can promote yourself as like a full blown out print on demand fulfillment center because you have the right systems in place, the right websites, you know, we're going to help you drive traffic to that. So they can go on the website and some of them are going to order. Some of them are, are not going to order. You do the AB testing and that's a big accomplishment. You reached out to them and then you asked them if they're going to reorder. And I think we've talked in the past where that kind of reaching out to the customers might have not it might have made you feel uncomfortable. How did that make you feel hearing the no? For me, it's easier to talk to the ones I, I've known and they've ordered from me since I started. I just feel more comfortable talking to them as opposed to the ones that did like one or two orders and I don't really know them on a personal level. I do get nervous when it comes to the ones I don't really know. I do want to be more of a fulfillment center like that mm -hmm. and, and getting those kinds of clients as opposed to the one or two that I've done before. I mean, I'm still working like on Monday, I have this, this meeting with the high school to try to do their football packages. When the players start coming in like freshmen, they give them that these little, they also, when they all start the season, they bring in all the players and they give them these little packets. And it usually involves like a beanie, a, sw a hoodie, sweats, a t-shirt and a sticker so on monday i have a meeting with the team mom she's the one that orders everything we also have a spirit trailer at that school i got that client from volunteering at the spirit trailer on a varsity game nice what's the strategy with the time that we have left let's do a strategy sh session for that meeting what's your strategy behind that <laughs> well, i know she's going to talk to me there's certain designs they have their logo with a warrior on it but a lot of the people there they just like that varsity letter like the R. I wanted to take samples, but she already has samples. So I don't know if I should take samples again, or she's already gotten samples of our stickers. She's already gotten samples of our t-shirts. I did plaques for the coaches last year. So if anybody has suggestions for that on Monday, we're supposed to be meeting and see if I actually get the full blown order. They are going to do wholesale where they resell it, whatever I give them the price they're going to sell it at the spirit trailer okay what kind of sound like you've given this specific customer samples in the past yeah well that her and some of the other team moms because like freshmen juniors and but it's this freshman team and then it's like the jv team and then varsity in the past they've ordered from another screen printer they're trying to keep things local so that they can support local here and then i'm also a mom for one of the players on the team so my, my okay family. what i would recommend what volume do you think they're going to order hundreds or thousands it's probably in the thousands one size of this design and then one size of this design and then what i would recommend based on kind of the conversation that we had is like you have you know today's wednesday you have a couple of days to line this line these you start today reach out to screen printers in your area get their wholesale pricing reach out to wholesale embroidery shops in your area get their pricing you can go with your pricing right as an example i think i've shared my price list before to guide you if you get the wholesale pricing from a screen print shop they'll be like oh yeah for a thousand pieces uh it's free setup you know it's a dollar fifty a print so whatever it is, you mark that up maybe 25 to 30%, if, especially with schools, they're bidding on different contractors. And it's 
the lowest bid is what wins. <laughs> well, this is a strategy, right? How do you position yourself for that customer service? Their biggest thing is that when they order the turnarounds, not that fast. I had things done for her since she also does what they call a youth football. She, uh -huh. had, um, two, she has two sons on youth football and then she has one son in high school. And so for the youth football thing, I did a lot of the hoodies for that team. Mm -hmm. And I also did direct to garment um, for the hoodies. But for me, the direct to garment, it's, I feel like I'm not set up to produce that much because I have like the handheld sprayer. I prefer to do direct to film. It's easier. And kind of what I was getting at with the strategy, Alma, you have like your high volume pricing for embroidery and screen printing, right? But then you have your secret weapon, which is your direct to film, you know, free jet printer. So it's like, here's the screen printed, here's the embroidery, here are these samples, here's the pricing. But we also have the advantage that you do graphic art, right? So if it's somebody that you can do a team name with a bunch of graphics with the school's logos incorporated on there. Here's option A, option B, and option C. You want to guide them towards option C, which is the cooler. Not too many people are doing direct to film. They're reselling it. This one's is an example, a t-shirt. Here's a t-shirt. Because if you're dealing with thousands of t-shirts, they're going to be thinking five bucks, right? Realistically for maybe, they're like, hey, we can get a t-shirt for three bucks. Probably a couple dollars for the screen printing. Our normal vendor, they do five to six bucks. So you can even go with your, like, your little kit, right? Here's a screen printing. Here's embroidery. Here's a direct to film. What's your price point? What are you trying to re? So it's kind of like, you know, you roll up with your kit. What's your budget? Like how much do you want to resell it for? I personally would recommend this direct to film. It can be like limited colors. We can mix and match. We can do screen printing this volume, embroidery that volume. What do you guys have in mind? So you don't go in there like with, oh man, I need to have my pricing, right? It's kind of... Yeah, I feel like I need a price sheet and to show... No, it just... Go there to sell them an Alma, right? You're there to collect information. Like, what do you want? There's all these options. I can help you out and put these options together because you already know that. Um, and you can tell them like, yeah, for screen printing, it's going to be a couple of weeks for embroidery. We need seven to 10 business days. So you can already start the process of looking for your outsourced partners. We can help you on the film side, right? If it's a large order, not, not like in the thousands, but say it's like 300 pieces or whatever. Would, would I do it through the fulfillment center that you guys use? Or would you still suggest that I start? I'm not going to have enough time to, to test the screen printers in this area to get that fast. I have resources for that. I'll help you out with that. Just remember, sell them on you. Collect information on what they want. Let them know, like, here's option one, option two. Here's the shiny value add, up and coming, unlimited color stuff. Between now and then, if you need anything, you have my contact information. We can do more role playing. I feel like you're going good and you have the good mindset. You have, you know, you present yourself really good. And it, now it's like what somebody put on there. It's like, you know, just believing in what you're doing and knowing what you're worth. Cool. Why, well, Reynold, nice seeing you. I'll talk to you Friday. Thank you guys for joining. I know Benny, we're going to be chatting tomorrow. You guys have a good one. See you next week.